In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let's take just a moment to continue our journey through Advent by admitting our weaknesses, failings, and sins, and celebrating the redemptive power of God's love and the forgiveness of those sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, we pray, O Lord our God, by your divine power, so that at the coming of Christ your Son, we may be found worthy of the banquet of eternal life and merit to receive heavenly nourishment from his hands, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. The response is, I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, went up the mountain, and sat down there. Great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many others. They placed them at his feet and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they saw the mute walking, 
are the mute speaking, the deformed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind able to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, what, where could we ever get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy such a crowd? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. The Gospel of the Lord. In the 2,000 years since the time of Jesus, numbers have changed, uh, at least in the way we understand and, and get their meaning. For us, numbers are used to make sure the lights turn on, the computer works, that the, uh, the paycheck balances the way it's supposed to, and the income taxes are all the way they're, they're supposed to be sent in, and not a penny more. But for the ancients, numbers had power. They had meaning. And there was no number greater than seven. And so we heard that twice in today's gospel. In the first place, where he says, how much bread have you got? And they say, seven loaves. For us, that's just, well, they had seven loaves of bread. That's pretty not, not too bad, you know, 12 guys going to share seven loaves. But for the ancients, seven was perfection. Jesus said, feed these people. And they had everything they needed to do it. That's what the seven means. They already had, before Jesus does a miracle, everything they needed in order to do what Jesus asked them to do. And when all the work is done and all the feeding has happened and they've, you notice he has them do it, he prays the blessing. He only gives them seven loaves. It's the disciples who feed the thousands of people who are on the hillside. The disciples take seven loaves pass them around and fill seven baskets with the fragments. And again, that seven reminds the disciples and the early church that after they did what they were supposed to do, they had the perfect leftovers to accomplish everything else God would ask them to do. That's why it's baskets instead of loaves. So when we hear that number seven, we should be thinking about ourselves. God has already given us everything we need in order to accomplish everything he asks us to do. And even when we finished doing it, there will be enough left over to accomplish anything else and everything else that God ultimately asks us to accomplish. That's seven the power of numbers for the ancients. We hope that they can be as powerful for us. But another key piece to this text is that Jesus is up on a mountain. He's not in a, a comfortable plateau or a valley or a comfortable place to bring all these sick people. They have to work. You know, you have to lead the blind. You have to carry the lame. You have to uh, uh, take all these people who need something to be fully human. The mute need a voice to be fully human. The lame need a leg, maybe two, so that they can be fully human. And that's the point of all of Jesus' miracles. He's only giving us what we are in the first place. He restores our humanity. And that ultimately should lead us to the understanding of what the sacramental life of the church is about. It's to restore us 
to the fullness of our spiritual humanity, the humanity that we had before Adam and Eve fell from grace. That's the purpose of Christ coming among us. And he's on a mountain. You notice in the, in the first reading where there are Isaiah's talking about, on this mountain, God will destroy the, the last thing, is death. And this is a typical uh, reading from Isaiah is a typical funeral homily. I would guess that over the years of the several thousand funerals I've done, this has been in at least half of them, maybe more. On this mountain, God will provide the kingdom of God. That's the symbolism of the rich, choice, juicy foods and drinks. But when he says he's going to destroy death on the mountain, I like to imagine that that's why our churches were built the way they were. You can't go in any old church and not climb a million steps. We have steps in the front of the church just to get in here. We have steps to get into the sanctuary. We have steps to get up to the tabernacle. And I believe that is because the artists and architects of these ancient churches understood that on this mountain, on this height, God would destroy death forever. And they wanted to symbolize that by putting the altar as high in the church as it could get. Not just so we can see it, but so we can get that sense of we've climbed the mountain despite our weaknesses, despite that we can't see with the spiritual eyes God wants us to see with, that we can't walk with the spiritual feet and legs that God wants us to walk with, that we can't use the tongue that God wants us to use. And on this mountain, God gives us the fullness of our humanity. And so Isaiah then reminds us that the ultimate triumph will be the triumph over death itself on this mountain. And so it is that we celebrate on that table Christ's conquest of death. On the altar, when we celebrate the Mass, it's Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, all rolled into one. And today, it may only take us 25 or 30 minutes, but we have compacted into this moment the Last Supper, the crucifixion, and the resurrection from the dead. Christ's triumph and the restoration of the fullness of our humanity. And so it is that we take great excitement and pride in marching into our churches, walking up to the table of the Lord, and proclaiming when we say, this is Jesus, God Almighty. We respond with that simple Amen, because it is the real presence of Jesus Christ conquering death and giving you and me the gift of eternal life. Let us raise our voices in prayer, trusting that our God, having heard us, will also answer us. And as always, let's first pray for the Universal Church, particularly for those in positions of leadership, whether it be the Holy Father, our bishops, whether it be pastors, whether it be associate pastors, whether it be committee leaders, whether it be people on the street, that they might all humble themselves before the Lord and proclaim the goodness of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray too for those who lead the world's nations, especially those that are scrapping and warring and carrying on with one another, that they will lay down the instruments of war and pick up the instruments of peace, embracing one another so that peace might reign on earth as Jesus has asked us to do. We pray to the Lord. 
Let's continue to pray for all those who are suffering from the COVID virus, um, particularly as it is going through this second resurgence. Let's pray for those who actually have the disease, first responders who are taking care of them. Let's pray for all those whose jobs are jeopardized and their careers are jeopardized by the COVID virus. And let's pray that these uh, uh, vaccines that are now out there and being hopefully approved will help to beat this thing down. We pray to the Lord. And we here at the parish are always mindful of our, uh, our law enforcement people who have passed on into the kingdom. Let us say a special prayer for Officer Dumas today that his soul might rest in peace and his family be comforted by the reality of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. O loving and almighty God, you are indeed good and gracious to all of us. You hear our prayers and we place our hope in you to answer them. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread which we offer to you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual food. Lord, may the mingling of this water and wine make us partakers in your divinity as you humbled yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine which we offer to you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me of all of my iniquities. My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we, who watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the patroness of our sister parish, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and St. Patrick, our own patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's share with those around us a sign of God's peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder, next week, Tuesday, is uh, Holy Day, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, the patroness of the United States, and uh, we will have our streamed Mass on Tuesday evening at 5.30 rather than Wednesday, so please just come a day early, and for those who are streaming, tune in a day early uh, so that you can share with us in celebrating Mary, the Mother of God. And I might add the patroness of our sister parish, which was also founded by Father Hannon. Uh, he was baptized in the Immaculate Conception Church in Ballymote, Ireland. And uh, as a tribute to his uh, love of Mary, established his second parish in honor of the Blessed Mother. So please join us next Tuesday, whether streaming or here in the church, to celebrate the Immaculate Conception. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let's go now to love and to serve the Lord.